Hey guys, hope you're having a great day. It's your boy Phil. So today, we are going to have lunch at Gordon Ramsay's famous restaurant, Hell's Kitchen, here in Las Vegas, Nevada. So, what are we waiting for? Let's start the video. Hope you're having a great day everyone. So today we are in Las Vegas, Nevada where it's 110 degrees outside of Caesar's Palace and we are going to have lunch at Hell's Kitchen by Gordon Ramsay. As you know, the restaurant has the same name with the wildly popular TV series and they filmed some of the scenes right here. And as you can see, these are the winners of the seasons of Hell's Kitchen. I wish I had more time in filming the chefs prepare and cook the food, but we are more excited in trying out their menu, particularly the beef wellington which I always see at the television series. So reservations are ideally done by calling them because they will ensure the reservation. You can actually walk in in the restaurant as well but you will have to wait about 10 to 20 minutes, depends on the amount of people that are in the restaurant. But for such a spacious and elegant place, the tables are always full and it's one of the most famous restaurants in the Las Vegas Strip. And I think the space reaches up to two stories and you also have that pitchfork design that is distinct to Hell's Kitchen. The waiters were very friendly, courteous and have extensive knowledge about the menu. The menu features several appetizers, entrees, and desserts. You can pick and choose with what you want, but today we are going to their set menu because this is what's recommended by the chef and we want to taste that entree, that beef wellington. So let's get started. If you choose the wine pairing, you will have three different wines to the three course meal. But for me, I'm gonna go with the recommendation of our waiter, Marco. And shout out to you for recommending such a great cocktail. Now, uh, I'm not really an expert regarding cocktail drinks, but what I remember from this drink, it is very refreshing, has a hint of lime, sour notes, and slightly sweet. I think there's vodka because there's only a slight smell and taste of alcohol. And I think that's vodka. But this is still a refreshing drink to wet up your appetite before the appetizers and the main course. While we are waiting for our appetizers, we decided to get the seasonal menu of one dozen oysters from Massachusetts. It includes a vinegar sauce, cocktail sauce, and probably the smallest bottle of Tabasco sauce as seasoning for the oysters. The cocktail sauce has more of a freshly made taste compared to the ones that you have at seafood restaurants. The sweet and sour taste complements that salty flavor of the oyster because the oysters were tasty, full of umami, and tasted like the sea. I think the Tabasco sauce is better than the cocktail sauce because this provides a spicy note to the salty and umami flavor of the oyster. Make sure to drink that oyster juice as well. Now, I'm not sure what type of vinegar that they use and what are the herbs, but this was really tasty vinegar. Like tasty enough to put on your steaks, your fries, and everything else. Let's go to our first appetizer. Pan-seared scallops and English pea puree, pickled fennel, and sherry braised bacon lardons. Or a fancy way of saying, chopped bacon bits, but with a more delicious note. Scallops were seared perfectly, very delicious and very soft, with a slight hint of saltiness. The pea puree was so soft, melts in your mouth and only slightly sweet, and it complements the flavor of that scallops with that braised wine sauce. Let's go to the center of the plate where the bacon lardons are mixed with pickled fennel and some sweet peas. It is mixed with the sherry wine sauce which only gives it a slightly sweet flavor. And the bacon lardons are so delicious, rich and fatty. It's kind of like a combination between the bacon and the prosciutto. Really delicious. 
and they always have these distinct pitchforks which are kinda like of a trademark by Hell's Kitchen. Next is Arlum Tomato Burrata Salad, which consists of Arlum tomatoes mixed with their balsamic vinegar, extra virgin olive oil, chardonnay wine, and some burrata cheese. This salad doesn't look much because of its simple ingredients, but it tastes very delicious because of the Chardonnay wine as well as the extra virgin olive oil dressing that produces this distinct sweetness, flavor, and taste. And the burrata cheese provides the extra protein and creaminess to the salad. Really delicious! Next, we go to Beef Wellington as the main course. Beef Wellington is a steak dish made out of a filet mignon coated with pâté, which can involve a paste made of foie gras and duc sauce, which is a finely chopped mixture of mushrooms, stems, onions, herbs, black pepper, and reduced to a paste, and wrapped in puff pastry, and then baked to perfection. Producing three distinct layers, the meat, the duke cells, and the puff pastry. It also includes a side of potato puree, glazed root vegetables in a red wine demi-glaze. First, let's go to the potato puree or mashed potatoes. And oh, this was so creamy and buttery delicious. It's not like your ordinary mashed potatoes because it's full of creaminess and buttery goodness. It's a mashed potato that you'll write home about. And the glazed wine sauce in the center, I think, is for the vegetables. Because as you will see later, the beef wellington doesn't need any sauce for itself. The carrots and radish were tasty and crunchy. Let's go to the beef wellington. The challenge for a beef wellington is to keep it intact when you cut up the steak because you need to maintain the integrity of the duck cells and the puff pastry. And as you can see here, it's difficult to maintain. But who cares? It is still delicious. The beef inside was so delicious. Tender, melt in your mouth and serve medium rare. The duck cells provide the savory umami flavor of the mushrooms and the puff pastry is perfectly baked, golden brown, buttery, crispy, flaky, and tastes like a legitimate croissant. The beef wellington is so beautifully baked that it feels like you don't want to cut it up to ruin that perfectly baked dish. And this steak is so tender. I'm not sure though if it's a filet mignon or a tender, but it's still full of flavor and very tender. And you can see the puff pastry here dipped in that wine glaze. The wine glaze provides a sweet glazed flavor. But honestly, you don't really need the sauce because the beef wellington is very delicious in itself. And as you can see in this angle, it is very challenging to keep it in one piece. But for this slice, I still maintain the steak, the duke cells, and the puff pastry. And that is a delicious blend of flavors as you are chewing on that steak. And uh, I keep on chewing, not because the steak is not tender, but because you want the flavors to mix throughout your mouth. Because all of that umami flavor of those different textures really blend to make it a great bite. And you can see here how tender that steak is. Just don't overdo it like me because I really can't maintain the integrity of the beef wellington. In fact, even without the steak like you see here, you can eat them by itself because that duxelles and that puff pastry are full of flavor and umami. So after you're taking your final slices, make sure to get all of that flavor sauce on that plate. And that was a great main course. And after drinking some wine and some of my cocktails, we are going to the third course of the meal, dessert. So for dessert, we are going to have sticky toffee pudding, which is a very moist cake and topped with dulce de leche ice cream, which is flavored and baked with wine. That's the reason for its very moist texture. 
And if you have birthday celebrants like my cousin and my aunt, they will light their sticky toffee pudding for you. Now this cake was very delicious. At first when I was eating it was not that sweet and you can taste hints of the wine and the rum that they use for this cake. The chocolate syrup pudding is very sweet and the dulce de leche ice cream on top just adds to the sweetness. The perfect bite is with the chocolate syrup as you can see here and of course with that dulce de leche. As I've said, at first it wasn't that sweet. But as I was going along and eating this cake, I really felt the sweetness of this cake. And I think the portion sizes is just enough and for you not to be that overwhelmed with the sweetness. Thank you for watching this video and I really do hope that you enjoy it and thank you for your continued support. And as always, like, comment and subscribe. See you later in the next video guys. Take care.